Welcome to Spirits of Whiskey. We explore the wide world of whiskey through the many colorful personalities who make it, promote it, write about it, and more. With each podcast, Carrie Moynihan, a certified bourbon steward and bartender, and yours truly, Philip Dobar, director of the Cocktail Collection, interview whiskey's most important names. From high-profile makers, blenders, and ambassadors, to out-of-the-way innovators and remote pioneers. Join us as we discover the people and elements that give the water of life its spirit. Today on Spirits of Whiskey, our guests come from a land far, far away, the land of the rising sun. We have with us Mr. Christopher Pellegrini and Mr. Stephen Lyman, founder and ambassador, respectively, of Honkaku Spirits. Welcome, gentlemen. Yes, Thank welcome. You. Thank you very much. We Pleasure. love having you. Thank, thank you guys for getting up so early to do this because it's uh, it's four in the afternoon here and it's I don't know what time there. Nine in but... the morning there? Is that correct? Bingo. Okay. And you're the day after us, I believe. So, or before us, after us, after right. us. After us. The day yeah, tomorrow's going to be a day. Beautiful it's sunny Tuesday day. morning there. It's Monday afternoon here. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Tuesday morning here. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Well, as we always start out, we'd like to hear about your whiskey journeys and how did you two, dare I say, white folk end up in Japan making whiskey? <laughs> 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 Do tell. Uh, Christopher, we'll start with you. Uh, well, my, my, uh, I guess we'll start, call it an alcohol journey. I don't know. That's dangerously close to another word that we probably don't want to use. But, let's call it, a, let's um, call it a spirited journey. I like that. Okay. I, yes. I was um, spirited away to Japan by my girlfriend at the time who I had met while teaching in Korea. She really wanted to live here in Japan. I said, hey, that sounds like a great idea. And we moved here in 2002. And... Um, it was shortly after that that I ran headlong into the deep, winding, and just absolutely unending monster that is Japanese spirits. Uh, and I come, I came at that from a a beverage alcohol background. I actually had been making beer in Vermont when I was a, a wee pup and too young to drink what I was making, and that <laughs> on paper instilled in me. Sorry, on paper. Um, too young on paper. That's I like that. Yeah, I was on <laughs> paper. I was I was too young on paper. Um, in terms of my job description, I was not too young to be making it as a job, and that instilled in me a very very intense appreciation of handcrafted batch brewed or batch distilled spirits and and drinks, and so I brought that with me to Japan, and when I came here, it wasn't long before I found myself in a room with shochu and awamori and other spirits made in this country, of course, whiskey among them. And it has just been a wild ride ever since. Very cool. It's, it's, Very it, cool. It, it, it sounds it. And, and Stephen, what's your, what's your, 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 your backstory to this point? Yeah, I had, I had no background in beverage alcohol. Um, I started drinking after college, actually. I, oh, um, wow. A late yeah, bloomer. <laughs> I, I was certainly a late bloomer. I, I actually came and well, I discovered Japanese spirits through, uh, food through, uh, dining out. And, uh, I, I lived in New York city for 17 years and I discovered shochu and awamori in a Japanese izakaya, a Japanese gastro pub mm -hmm. in the city. And just got really, really interested in the category because I really enjoyed pairing wine with food, pairing beer with food. But I also had a preference for spirits, but I hadn't really found spirits that paired well with food uh, to any great degree. Um, I, off, I found the spirits just overwhelmed uh, the food. You, you'd, la you'd lose a lot of the sort of nuance and the subtleness and, and shochu changed that for me because you've got a very wide flavor and aroma spectrum that, uh, and also low, low alcohol percentage that I think lends itself to, to dining, to enjoying it with food, mm -hmm. which is a very Japanese way of, of enjoying alcohol generally. And so that sort of, that really pulled me into this when I was just craving information. I was more of a consumer. I really enjoyed craft beer, wine, and whiskey. I, I got into Scotch and American whiskey uh, through my culinary experiences as well, but I could just easily read about those things. I could talk to people and find information in English, but there was nothing about shochu or awamori in, in English. So I started a blog and then that just one thing led to another. 
It took off. It took off. Okay. That's right. Now, Christopher, uh, you you were a full time academic, correct? I I am chasing a PhD right now okay. in global you, and regional bioresource economics. Are you and approaching ABD? Yes, that's okay. Let's <laughs> and call it is call it approaching ABD. Okay. Yep. It is. Uh, it's a passion, uh-huh. and so I before Honkaku Spirits got off the ground, I was a full time. Uh, professor at a university here in Tokyo, and I took the leap. I uh-huh. resigned my position in March of last year, which was just absolutely that is, phenomenal. That is time. Eric. So, Christopher, what you're saying is your avocation has become your vocation. That's correct. It was very much a passion has become the profession, and uh-huh. it's it's a uh, very 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 exciting, but it's also you know, we're trying to educate uh, a population about something completely new to them. It's not new in Japan. No, the indeed. Shochu and Aomori have been around for you know, f- well over 500, maybe over 600 years. Sure. But uh, sure. they're sure. still unknown in the States. So that's now, a, a significant c- challenge. You're certified as an educator in sake, shochu, aromori, and whiskey. I don't have any qualifications in whiskey, so to speak. Except you but- make it. I don't, well, I, we don't, I don't have anything to do. I don't have a hand in making it. I drink it. You drink it. Okay. Yes. Very good. Very good. Can you explain to our listeners, we have a very, a a highly, how shall I say, uh, the, 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 Carrie, would you agree that the, the, the level of knowledge of our listeners is, uh, considerable when it comes to whiskey. Yes. Uh, and while they know that Japanese whiskey exists, their knowledge of, uh, you know, beyond uh, uh, Suntory, Hibiki, etc., cetera, uh, does not extend very far. And of course, those are basically the Scottish model uh, right. that's been imported um, 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 beginning in the early 20th century uh, from, from Edinburgh. Um, but um, can, can you give our listeners a quick once-over, a quick overview of sake, which of course is not a spirit per se, uh, uh, shochu aromori, and where koji whiskey, uh, koji fermented whiskey fits. Yeah, I, I'll start with the first three and then maybe I'll let Stephen jump in with okay, the transition right. to the koji whiskey. Um, so sake, as and it's pronounced sake, not saki, just so mm-hmm. everybody Indeed. knows. Yes. Sake. sake is a brewed beverage. It's made only from rice. It's made in most parts of japan although more to the north than to the south where shochu and awamori are made and it is it's been around for probably over a thousand years or in one way shape or form yeah it's long uh, enough that it can be called the indigenous or well well shochu can be called the indigenous spirit right it's one of of japan's national drinks Mm -hmm. um, which is they're referred to as kokushu and sake is the best known of them outside of japan but actually in japan there are a couple of spirits that combined would be called japan's indigenous spirits they are namely shochu and awamori and they outsell sake here which is a surprise even to people who live in this country Um, but they've been doing so ever since around 2003 when which was the time of the third quote unquote shochu boom in japan and shochu and awamori are spirits that are distilled from over four dozen approved ingredients approved by the tax office and their koji something that they have in common with sake koji is japan's national mold and it helps with the sacrification <laughs> process which replaces malting and steven will talk about that in a moment uh shochu is over 500 years old as i said it is most likely the direct progeny of awamori which is made down to the southwest in okinawa prefecture Mm -hmm. it's exclusive to okinawa correct it at least ryukyu awamori which is a a gi or an appellation an aoc that's protected by the wto that can only be made in okinawa awamori by itself could be made anywhere and be called that but ryukyu awamori is protected and ryukyu awamori which we'll call shochu's uncle is only made from rice but it's also only made with black koji which makes it very very distinct from other rice spirits and rice drinks made in japan 
That was a very, very brief overview. But the key takeaway here is that sake is a brewed beverage. Shochu and awamori are distilled, meaning that they tend to be above 20% ABV. And sake, on the other hand, is almost always under under 20% ABV. <laughs> and I think maybe that's a good foundation for Stephen to jump from uh, since we're on spirits and he can move into whiskey. Great. Sure. And I think a key a key point also with shochu and awamori is single pot distillation. And not not in an Irish single pot sense, but in a one time through the pot still. Okay. So essentially you're bottling or or aging low wines, if you were thinking about mm-hmm. it from a, from a whiskey perspective. Now the fermentations in uh shochu and awamori get much higher in alcohol content than than your typical whiskey. Uh, fermentation uh, after about uh, two to three weeks of of fermentation you're up to somewhere between 15 18 19 percent alcohol uh, in your fermentation and so a single run through the still <clears throat> and another key point with with that is it's um, the heads are kept the tails are kept to a large degree there are no cuts okay so oh. uh, shochu and awamori basically you start the still you start to collect the spirit very very shortly after uh, liquid starts coming out of the still, and then you let it run until you've reached the uh, the point in the tails in which you no longer want anything else that's going to come out. And mm-hmm. so, uh, single pot distilled, no cuts is essentially shochu and awamori uh, distillation, which obviously makes it quite a bit different from whiskey. Um, now, indeed, a question about the, yep. the 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 toxins that are that are that are produced in yeah, like sure. standard and... spirits production. Um, are they not produced? Are they somehow less toxic? Um, how does that work? What's 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 well, as I said? There? It's as I said. It's very shortly after the spirit starts coming off the still is mm-hmm. is when you would start to collect. So there, I, a little bit of that methanol and that sort of thing is going to blow off at the top. But the other thing is that shochu is then stored, and a lot of those volatile compounds and things break down, and and. Uh, resolve themselves okay now i haven't done chemical analysis of of these spirits i'm not sure whether or not there is some residual methanol uh but there's at least it doesn't present itself and these have not been demonstrated to be harmful in any way other than the fact that they are alcohols the nation of japan is not going blind over shochu consumption correct (laughs) okay (laughs) and neither have we (laughs) <laughs> what I, I can't see you. Heart. <laughs> yeah. Not blind, I'm yeah. invisible. Now there are there are what's interesting is there's a there's a recent trend in shochu which is called shinshu or essentially new make. And so they're bottling within usually a month of distillation and those are funky. Okay. They're, so fight fight dog shochu. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's uh, they're an acquired taste, and that's a taste I haven't really acquired. Um, it's a nice. it's a it's a very very wild, and and if I have more than a couple of glasses, of that I get a pretty bad headache the next day. So I I suspect there's some toxins in that. Okay, uh, which is part of why I tend not to drink too much of it. Right, right. Although right. although whenever whenever the new makes is coming out, the shinshu comes out, everyone wants you to try their favorite brand. Right. <laughs> when you're out at a shochu bar, so it's almost of inevitable course. that you do have to consume some of it. Of course, right. it's like drinking Irish whiskey with Irish whiskey drinkers. You go, have you tried the pachin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Stephen, how did you get from New York to Japan working on this brand? Uh, well, as far as the the, the travel was, um, all Nippon Airlines, uh, <laughs> our, our our preferred uh, carrier. Um, this is not a but, paid promotion. <laughs> yeah, uh, C- Christopher, I, was, I used to fly fly JAL when I used to come to visit Japan, and then Christopher very quickly convinced me that ANA was the way to go. So I've become a dedicated ANA flyer ever since. Uh, seriously, though, I um, I actually came here uh, for work. I um, here in Japan, I I had been coming every year to make shochu in a distillery since 2013. So I work in a sweet potato shochu distillery, the smallest uh, all handmade shochu distillery in Kagoshima Prefecture. Uh, I was back for my ninth season this year. I don't go for the entire season because I do have a a different profession. Uh, And so I spend, it depends on the year, but somewhere between a week to about uh, a month in the distillery every year, helping out 
a tiny little distillery, everything by hand. And uh, it's been a, a great experience. But having started that process and coming over that frequently, I, I started to look for an opportunity to move here. And so I was uh, presented with that opportunity and uh, moved here in 2018. I thought it might be a relatively short stay, and now it seems to be coming permanent, uh, at least <laughs> semi-permanent. Yeah, and with COVID now it especially, is I'm sure that's... It's... I'm sorry, Carrie. Oh, I was going to say with COVID, I'm sure that's uh, kept you there even longer than than you would have been. Yeah. There has not been any rush to, to head back to the States, given how the two countries have handled yeah, the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, it's um, a thing. So you are full-time now with Honkaku? Yeah. No, nope. uh, that's why yeah. I am the ambassador. I'm, okay. I, I've okay. continued my academic career. Okay. And uh, I, I do everything I can to support Christopher and the Honkaku team in uh, promotion of these wonderful drinks. Uh, and I do, I will take uh, at least partial credit for the whiskey in that I, I had nurtured a long relationship with the son of the president of Shinozaki Distillery where Takamine is made. Uh, and he was actually the first person to suggest that I get into this as a profession rather than uh, as a uh, as a hobby. As a hobbyist. Mm -hmm. And and uh, of course, I I I enjoy what I do uh, for a living, and I'll so I'll stick with that. And but but I was happy to make the connections. I was happy to draw uh, with Honkaku, getting getting these relationships built, mm -hmm. and and the the. Uh, Takamine brand, what, what's so unique to us about it is the fact that, and this is what I think a lot of people don't know, and hopefully uh, this will be educational for your listeners. Contrary to popular belief, Masataka Taketsudu was not the first Japanese person to make whiskey. Okay. So the first person. Mind's blown. Whiskey mind's blown. <laughs> He was, now he was, we'll give him this credit. He was the belief, he is believed to be the first Japanese person to make authentic whiskey in Japan. However, 25 years before he sailed to Scotland to learn how to make whiskey, Jokichi Takamine, a Japanese chemist living in Illinois, was making whiskey for the Illinois Whiskey Trust. And he was making a maltless whiskey. Um, which confuses a lot of people as well, because yeah. as you mentioned earlier at the top of the show, Japanese whiskey is made in the Scotch style. That's the tradition. Mm -hmm. That's Yamazaki. That's mm -hmm. Nika. Right. Uh, and that's how essentially the new, the new labeling regulations have actually codified Japanese whiskey as being made in the Scotch style mm -hmm. uh, with malt. And Takamine was actually, he, he was a fascinating guy. He was born the year that, Commodore Perry opened Japan 1854. So when Commodore oh, wow. Perry sailed into Edo Bay with his black ships and opened the country at gunpoint was the year that uh, Takamine was born. Uh, he was born to a samurai physician. That was his father. That was an occupation back then. Wow. And uh, his mother came from a I'll sake making family. I'll cut you, then family. I'll fix you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hell of a business card, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I hurt you, don't worry. I'll fix you right up. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but uh, Jokichi ended up, by all accounts, was quite a quite a brilliant uh, young man. And so he actually ended up studying uh, in Nagasaki, which was a center of Western learning in Japan during that time. He then uh, went to and studied in Osaka and uh, Kyoto. And finally, he ended up entering university at what is now Tokyo University, the top university in Asia. Uh, and he ended up being part of the first graduating class in this in the Department of Engineering. Uh, but he he studied uh, essentially biochemistry, and with his mother's family's sake making background, he understood koji, which Christopher had mentioned early, <clears throat> earlier. And koji's key role in alcohol production in Japan is sacrification. It's converting starches to sugars, which is what malt does. So when you apply sake making techniques to uh, to whiskey production, essentially, you end up with a maltless whiskey. Mm -hmm. So Takamine, being a, a bright young man, actually patented the use of koji to make whiskey. The Takamine process was a U.S. patent and a U.K. patent to make maltless whiskey. <clears throat> and so he licensed that 
technology to the Illinois Whiskey Trust in 1891, and they began experiments. And there was a there was a an article in the Chicago Tribune titled "Whiskey to Become Cheaper." And if you read the fine print of the article, it explained that malting was going to be done away with. There was no more need for malting. Oh, wow. The maltsters weren't really happy with that. And so two weeks after that article was published, there was a mysterious fire at the Manhattan (laughs) Distillery in Peoria, Illinois. The malt lobby, um, the the arsonist malt lobby. The malt mob, more likely. It sounds like like Takamine himself barely avoided uh, assassination, essentially. He was hiding in the basement of the building at the time. And uh, ended up surviving, escaping, and they rebuilt and continued their experiments. And then in December of 1894, they began making the Takamine process whiskey at the Manhattan Distillery in Peoria, Illinois. So this, uh, this is, if I can interject very quickly, the Illinois Whiskey Trust was the monopoly to end all monopolies. Yeah, I mean, sure how was. many, Stephen, how many distilleries did they have under that umbrella? I think they had 57 distilleries at their peak. So they were making they were making most of spirits in America in the eighteen right. nineties. I mean, and yeah. when I say most, we're talking north of eighty percent of all spirits were, yeah, they were, were from the one capital. company. So they were, they were for sure. They were the MGP of the of the of the roaring <laughs> on MGP yes, on, on the, roids of the, of the gay nineties. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So. yeah. Mm-hmm. And they if if this had they were making a koji whiskey in the eighteen nineties, and if this had taken off, it would have been that would have been American whiskey potentially. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But <laughs> 1894. Yeah. Sorry, Stephen. Yeah, yeah. No, protectionism no runs 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 deep in this country. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, it's funny because the it was anti-protectionist legislation that doomed this project. The mm. Sherman Act mm-hmm. was yeah. enacted in 1890, and it was rarely used in the in the first decade of its existence, except for the Illinois Whiskey Trust, <laughs> and in. In February 1895, so three months after they began production, mm-hmm. the Illinois Whiskey Trust was uh, brought to its knees and all of the assets were sold uh, to other interests. And those, the folks who purchased the Manhattan Distillery, which was the largest distillery in America at the time, mm-hmm. uh, decided to return to malting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. so Tak- Takamine sued to get his his uh patent back and he, mm-hmm. it was he was denied he lost the case oh. because that was an asset of the of the distillery right so this is this is just this is the, still the mid-90s uh, uh teddy roosevelt who of course is known as the trust buster he hadn't he, he had yet to charge up san juan hill um so he, he was far from far from the presidency um but but here was the sherman act being wielded uh wielded uh already um, uh, in this fashion and to perhaps whiskey's detriment. That's right. And there was a, you know, there, and you're talking about a, a Japanese national disrupting the American whiskey industry. In Illinois, sure no less. the Midwest. In Illinois, yeah. In the mid nineties, man, 1890s too. Let's yes, be clear. The gay nineties. 1890s. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So, Jeez. so he, uh, now he's actually, Japanese people don't know this story, actually. This was one of his few failed experiments. He uh, ended up <clears throat> moving to New York City uh, after the disappointment of his experience in Illinois and opening a laboratory in Harlem. And in 1900, he isolated adrenaline, which was the first oh. isolated human hormone in human history. Wow. And it's still used today for, for cardiac mm-hmm. rescue. Hence, Death and Co's jumping ahead here a bit, but hence, <laughs> hence Death and Co's adrenaline rush cocktail. That's correct. Yeah, that is correct. Okay, which incorporates Takamine. Okay, very good. Yeah, wow. Okay, all right. And so he became famously wealthy, as you can imagine. That was not that was one of, that that was his most famous medical innovation. He actually also created a stomach aid, a digestive aid called taka, taka diastase, which is actually uses koji because koji creates amylase and protease and helps break things down. So if you're feeling a little uncomfortable, you have a little takadiastase and, and your stomach problems resolve. Uh, so he, he made fortunes in a number of different ways, became very, very wealthy. Um, and he ended up later in life, uh, he was very devoted to Japanese American relations, despite his, his disappointments with the whiskey lawsuit and everything else. Uh, and he ended up donating the cherry blossom trees to Washington, DC. Uh, which oh my we all enjoy on the National Mall. Absolutely. Right. 
Yeah. Yeah. So that's what Japanese people know him for. Actually, he's the he's the adrenaline guy and the and the cherry tree guy. And the cherry blossom cherry guy. guy. Okay. All right. Yeah, but they but don't they don't older. realize that he almost single handedly. I mean, with the help of the trust, right. mm-hmm. turned whiskey making on its head in in the United States, he, and he, it, he, he was this close, if not for violent and you know yeah. insurrection and and basically, well, the the, tr- the trust busting. Yeah. That would have been American whiskey. He changed the know? face, and the, he would have changed the face and the literally of American yeah, whiskey. Yeah, completely. So it's, it's very it's nature. So close. Now, yeah, do you guys have close. any any maltless whiskeys from in your collection? Well, that is Takamine, uh, Koji fermented whiskey. That's right. That's so. Uh, so uh, the Shinozaki Distillery, which I mentioned earlier, they're the makers of of Takamine. Uh, the, the the son Michiaki, who's been a friend of mine for a long time, he also was aware of this story as an alcohol producer. I think he understood uh, the potential, and so he actually had convinced his father uh, to let him do some experiments. And so they started playing around and uh, essentially using koji fermentation uh, with koji grown on barley, and then adding more barley to the so we didn't get into the production really for shochu but typically you have a primary fermentation which is when you have an all koji fermentation and the koji is cr- sacrificing the grains as the yeast is uh converting this those uh sugars to alcohol so it's a multiple parallel fermentation both the yeast and koji are active at the same time mm-hmm. and then you add another ingredient to the main fermentation and that that defines what it is so when we say a sweet potato shochu it's typically a rice starter fermentation or primary fermentation with a sweet potato main fermentation. So it's added okay. to the, the so those often in the US, when you see the statement of composition, it will say spirits distilled from sweet potatoes and rice. Okay. And so that rice oh. is actually the first fermentation and the sweet so the rice is actually added. more of a starter. And then the, and then exactly. the sweet potato is the it's main like the mother dough when you're making bread. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Exactly. That's right. Okay. Okay. Uh, so what Shinozaki ended up doing was, Koji uh, on on barley as the primary fermentation, and then more barley into the second fermentation. So it's a one hundred percent barley fermentation. Okay. The two row, two row. Yes. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're starting barley. with that one. We have all these clear. <clears throat> oh, you well, have the shochu too. Oh, yeah, totally. one, two, three, it's only because four, they've, five, been, six, they've been they've been discussing it. Uh, yes, we have we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh boy! Eight. Okay. I have, well, eight. I have eight, including the whiskey. including the whiskey. I have the seven. Yes. One, two, yes. three, four, yes. five. Now we six, don't eight. have to taste all of them. I'm just saying we have. Them. <laughs> Speak for yourself. You guys are going to be in a good mood. Okay, um, Stephen. Well, I don't know if you did. You did you get to the end of where you were going with the with the Takamine conversation? Only, only as far as production. The production. Yeah. After, okay. After the main fermentation distilled it comes out it's about 18 19 percent alcohol at the, at the the finish of about a three-week fermentation mm-hmm. and then a double pot distilled uh okay. so distinctly different from from shochu and it comes off the still how hot it comes off um that's that's actually a really interesting question glad the, I asked. <laughs> it it is uh it comes off the still. Actually, the first distillation comes off at uh, around 43, 44%. Which is pretty high. Which is high. And then it is actually diluted back down before the second distillation. Okay. And then it is redistilled uh, back up to 43, 44%. So, at which point it's casked and then spends. Yeah. It takes a long nap. All right, so this yeah, is yes, bottled yes. more or less at cask strength. Very yes, nearly. Right. This, 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 right. is, this is 40. There's mm-hmm. minimal dilution, and that dilution mostly comes from the fact that Shinozaki pushes the spirit around the distillery with water. Mm-hmm. So it experiences a small amount of, of dilution as it's moving towards the filter, and, uh, and, the, and then you get something that's – they can – faithfully and reliably bottle at 40 percent, which is why it ends up there mm-hmm. okay. every time regardless of cask strength okay all right um so just to summarize really quickly for all because i know 
from a beer background, this can be really confusing for people who understand how beer and whiskey are made. Mm -hmm. In whiskey and beer, there's a hot side of the process and there's a cold side of the process. Um, the hot being when you're when you're milling and mashing and laudering and the whole nine yards. None of the hot happens in shochu and awamori production or in koji whiskey production. There's no boil. Mm -hmm. It's wow. only it's it's really it now making the koji requires a warm and humid and carefully controlled environment, but it's not boiling hot. You can you can stand in that room. It's like okay. it's a little bit like a sauna. Um, nice. It is quite toasty in there. But otherwise, there's no hot process in the pro production of these drinks. The same is true for sake. All koji fermented spirits and drinks don't have a hot side. It's cold okay. only. All right. Here, here, here's a question. And you, you mentioned the, 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 the new labeling uh, uh, whiskey uh, standards in Japan, which Gary and I, we did, uh, we did a segment on that. Uh, I don't know, some episodes ago, maybe yep. 12, 12 or so episodes ago. Don't remember exactly. Uh, but what does that mean for koji whiskey? Yeah. Well, so by by those standards, the uh, which are voluntary, uh, mm -hmm. the, these koji whiskeys are not classified as Japanese whiskey. Um, That's excellent. But but this is fermented, distilled, matured, bottled in Japan. Uh -huh. So everything it's whiskey about made it in says whiskey. Japan, but not That's Japanese right. whiskey. Right, right. Not now, technically now we, Japanese whiskey. We have we have consciously, if you visit our website, you will not see the words Japanese and whiskey side by side anywhere on the website. It's not mm -hmm. on the label anywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's now okay. we do have the Shodo artwork of the of Takamine's name, mm -hmm. the the calligraphy on on the front label, so it does appear as a Japanese whiskey. Now that label was designed before these standards were announced. That's true. We had this on in the fact, water as the standards were yeah, announced. In fact, the, the first <laughs> container was nearly to New York when when the standards were announced. Um, but but this is a, a revival of an American style of whiskey. That's that's just it was mind delicious. Blowing. That's mind blowing. It so, is mind isn't it crazy? It's wonderful, <laughs> and, and it's wonderful, and it's wonderful. Um, okay, so. Um, Wow. So, so is this is this an instance of protectionism at work? Well, no. or is it more who, of an oversight. Let's let's talk about who's the chair of that committee that made those rules, and who else <laughs> sits on that committee, and perhaps which which have yet to take the force of law because uh, the uh, the 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 federal legislature has not yet taken it up. Correct. That's correct. Although yep. they That's might, right. they yeah. like their tax money. So I don't think that they're okay. too eager to to try to stop products from being made that could be sold overseas. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I have a feeling it's going to remain uh, standards for the Spirits and Liqueur Makers Association. Okay. <laughs> so tell rice. us about these seven <laughs> other clear spirits that you sent over. And, sure. And what are they? What are they about? And what do they have to do? Do they have anything oh, to do with the final product of the whiskey? Or are these all independently? The thing that they all have in common themselves? is they all leverage the power of Koji, which is okay. Japan's national mold, as we said before. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's very important. And that's why we put Koji fermented on the front of the label in the Takamine whiskey uh, bottle. And it's, it's what we want everybody to know about. Koji is becoming increasingly common in kitchens across the world. It's used, of course, also to make soy sauce and miso. It, it, it is essentially a, a meat tenderizer. There's a pretty well-known chef in Cleveland named Jeremy Umansky who, who runs larder. And he, he speed cures everything from, from shellfish to lamb, to s steaks, and all sorts mm -hmm. of different cuts of meat with koji. It's an amazingly fast process that also adds a ton of flavor. And the U word, which we've all learned to love, umami, is mm -hmm. part and parcel with koji well, use in, in, uh, in food and beverage production. It's wonderful and, that Koji is uh, 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 gaining a foothold. I mean, you know, I mean, Stacky Batras, you know, has, you know, uh, there's there's been a lot of stachybotrys in American kitchens for a long time, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. So it's, but it Koji's wasn't gonna that any day. We just, yeah, it wasn't yeah. that crazy of an idea. Obviously. Yeah. No. Indeed. Yeah. Right. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's it's and Koji's popping up deadly. all over the place. Yeah. 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 And it's uh it's absolutely you have to use it to make these spirits in sure. Japan shochu and awamori. Now, what you have in front of you, the the seven clear spirits all leverage koji but one thing that makes them very different from the whiskey is that they are single distilled which means that they smell and taste like what they're made from oh wow right okay and that's the that's the really crazy thing about this this is the rabbit hole so welcome to the precipice uh let's start with do you have one called celephant yes okay this is a kokuto sugar shochu and it is made with this largely unrefined dark sugar, incredibly mineral rich. It's considered a superfood in the Amami Islands where it's made. Mm -hmm. And this is a single pot distilled dark sugar expression made with a rice koji starter fermentation. So it, it presents a little bit on the nose like a rum, but it's way drier and and it has a bunch of layers that are not it's, necessarily it's rum like a rum on the nose and a gin feel on the on the mouth. Interesting. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a largely it's a unrefined gin. sugar. So the the, 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 the the better part of the molasses is still in there. That's correct. That's correct. It keeps all of that treacle. It keeps all of that um, all the of those dark it. sugar qualities. Mm -hmm. And it's very rich and it's used. And like I said, it, it really is considered to be a superfood. And it's, mm -hmm. it's no coincidence that the people down in the Southern islands of Japan are some of the longest lived in the world in terms of the average lifespan. Um, and they, this is kind of a daily part of their lives. They put it in their coffee. They eat it as a little snack, this dark sugar. Steven, do you have a, an example of this stuff by I any do, chance? Do. It's it's this caked dark sugar and it's it's really rich and you're only by Japanese tax law allowed to make this style in the Amami Islands so it's it's kind of it's domestically protected uh -huh. in that sense okay. kind of like a, a regional or a domestic GI uh, there, just, there's a oh, wow. he has a chunk of it okay okay is so it akin we, to jaggery or um, it's 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 more along the lines of a turbinado or a okay. demerara or okay. something that just hasn't been processed too much like the 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 dark sugar that we sometimes mm -hmm. use for cooking in the states mm -hmm. right. and uh, which so has that's, molasses reintroduced to it that's right after the it's fact been stripped it goes and then dark paper white and then it, and then they bring it back a little bit and give it some character yeah um so that's that's one style in your collection. And just to be mindful of time, I don't know if we really want to go through, you want to go through all seven real quick. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be dizzying. Um, well, I think you should, we should go through the most important ones, I think maybe. Okay. Whatever. We could, I think maybe we hit and, a few different notes all here. Of the, all of these are in the Honkaku Spirits. Portfolio, they are. Correct? Honkaku okay. Spirits.com. And you can find a ton of information about each one, as well as where to purchase them by using the find a retailer button. Very good. And right. it'll tell you the, the places near where you, where your computer is or your phone is. Right. Um, and uh, I think. Maybe just. Yeah. Maybe not oh, just taste to it, mention that one. Yeah. So this is actually, uh, yeah. so Celephant and Kana are both from the Nishihira distillery in Amami. Uh, Kana is barrel aged Celephant. So okay. Celephant is stored in an enamel line glass, uh, enamel line stainless tank. Kana is, is then put in a, is put in a barrel for a year. Okay. So it is slightly straw. That's very right. strong, um, pretty, yeah. pretty tired. By, by comparison, mm -hmm. yeah, oh, but, I guess uh, it is a little color. one year in oak expresses quite a bit differently despite the short yeah, time. In oak. Um, but those are uh, it's a little, it's a little smoother, I think. Spoken like a true whiskey drinker, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yep, oh, both are 30 for 30 percent ABV, so they're they're gonna be pretty easy to understand for a whiskey drinker, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a standard ABV in the Amami Islands and in Okinawa in the rest of okay. Japan, at least most of the rest of Japan, 25% is the standard for shochu. Uh, but down South in the islands, they, they like their spirits a little bit, just a touch hotter. Yeah. And there are also some, some even higher spirit 
uh, shochus. Yes, uh, right brand, above you know, forty that, that Americans would 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 recognize as spirit strength. Right, sure. sure. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, let's move up a little bit in ABV, mm-hmm. and and uh, I um I guess we'll start with with masako or no. What okay. do you think, Stephen? Barley or or rice? I would go. Rice well, do, you, do you have mugi hoka? Uh, mugi hoka would be barley. Yes. Okay, then we're going to go do. down in ABV a little bit. Okay. We're going to go to 25. This is a 100% barley shochu, okay, and single pot distilled. The fun thing about this one, and you're going to notice it on the nose immediately, is that a portion of the mash bill is roasted barley. Aha. Uh-huh. And Absolutely. you're going to get, and, and it's going to jump right out of the glass at you. There is no mistake in the roast. Oh, yeah. On that. I totally smell roasted and barley. Oh my god! And it's yeah. a yeah. it's a coffee dark chocolate punch. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, in the '60s and '70s, uh, in the uh, at least in the U.S. when I was growing up, uh, you know, oh, there was, a, there was a coffee barley punch. coffee. There was roasted barley coffee that was a mm-hmm. substitute for coffee bean coffee. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Oh, that totally tastes. And like you can coffee. you can still find it, and it's 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 a very nice taste. But fact, really, it's barley. I think tea. I would put this in coffee. You would I, I do. be right on the money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Steven, what's your cocktail? Yeah. So I, I like the, what I make is called the Coda, uh, which is coffee soda. Japanese like to mash words uh, together. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so we have a, uh, it's coffee and soda with a splash of Mugi Hoka over ice. Nice, refreshing. I like that. Uh, okay. Yeah. And if it, if it wasn't uh, 10 in the morning, I'd probably be making one right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is actually, guys, a refreshing change because usually we're dealing with the East Coast or, or even uh, Europe, and we're doing the early bird. And I'm like, oh, we gotta yeah, get people we're the nine in Japan crew. so we can do like four o'clock because this <laughs> drinking lunch, in the morning please. is getting a little bad. We're the nine o'clock crew, and we might have eight whiskeys that we're tasting. Right. Oh, geez. And I was like, I was like, these Japanese guys. Thank goodness they're, <laughs> they're in Japan because <laughs> they sent time us zones works in our favor. But they won't drink with us. What's up? Okay. Anyway. Um, all right. I get, well, I, we can pour a little something something here. Which, um, which, which next? That's um, Let's move on to Masako, which is another barley expression, but completely different. So the, you, you can see that the, the kokuto sugar and the barley were just nothing alike, right? Absolutely. Right. right. Yeah. And that's there just was, a very alcohol. quick peak. There was alcohol some in of both. This. That's where it stopped. Yeah. That's yeah. about it. Alcohol were, and koji in both. Uh-huh. And uh, and next they came in we're the same to, bottle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, they're all the same shape. Masako yeah. is a barley shochu made by Furusawa Distillery in in Miyazaki Prefecture, and this one's thirty five, and it's made by uh, a person named Masako Masako, and she is the fifth generation Toji or master brewer distiller of this family distillery. It's a really old school expression. It's way funkier, mm-hmm. um, earthier. It's got a salinity to it that is wow. thanks to the nearby Pacific Ocean. She, her distillery is on a spit of land between the o- Odotsu River and the Pacific Ocean. And, you know, basically you know, there's water on both sides. The distillery is only about a meter, ab- about a yard above sea level. Wow. And she, makes shoju in the way that she's the only way she knows and she was born in the family home which is attached to the distillery she grew up two sliding doors away from the still and she's only ever really known those smells those sounds and and those flavor profiles and she still makes it in the same way that she her family has always done it and this one it's pretty pretty cool yeah it is cool and it does you're right it's very very earthy and I can get I get a little bit of the uh, maritime on there as well. Little little brine, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's lovely. And if we stick with the same family, the same distillery, you can move to Motoko, okay. which is named after Masako's mother. Ah, okay. and she was the third generation Toji of this distillery, and she's retired now. She. She's in the family home, so she's not far away. <laughs> she she is really like just in the next room, uh, perhaps watching TV. And this is a 100% rice shochu. 
And the salinity is still there. This one has an unctuous umami quality to it. Oh, yeah. Very oily is, mouthfeel. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's definitely got an umami feel. Oh, yeah. And that's uh, this one has been, in addition to what Death & Company is doing with, with Takamine, they're also using this one, Motoko, in, uh, in a different uh, cocktail. And they love Motoko because it has this kind of mushroomy, umami quality to it that mm -hmm. they've figured out a way to leverage 35% again. Okay. All right. And the third of this trilogy is called Mahoko, and this okay. is a sweet potato shochu. Oh, I can't And wait. this is named after Masako's niece, who may become the sixth generation once she, once she graduates from high school and then university. <laughs> she's she's not old enough to drink this yet. So, but she uh, already but she's has pretty, a spirit named after her. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But she she is pretty stoked to probably be the only only high school student in the world to have a spirit brand named after them. So, Oh, that's much sweeter. Sweet potato show too. This is also yeah. the oldest of the lot. It says 15 years on the label in Japanese, but it's actually 16 because it took us an extra year to it. Last year was, as you probably recall, a bit of a sideways um, yeah. <laughs> 100 meter dash. That's the word. Yep. And yeah. uh, so it got an extra year in the, in the tank before we bottled it. But okay. sweet potato shochu, meaning, as is most sweet potato shochu, rice, koji, starter fermentation, sweet potatoes in the secondary fermentation. Okay. And this one is uh, pretty cool. Well, guys, listen, there are only two more. See, I only have one more. I have yeah. colorful. That's it. What you do you have? Colorful. You don't have kana? No. Oh, we already, oh. Uh, kana we was the kana. second one. Kana oh, was just barrel aged okay. Uh, cellophane. Okay. Okay. So I which think was we only have one more, which is the colorful. And I'm going to, yeah, and this one also got into Death & Co. Uh, Steven, you want to tell them about Colorful? Sure. Colorful is made by uh, Shodo Distillery, which is actually right down the street, uh, maybe 20, 30 minute drive from, from Furusawa. Uh, and it's a blend of two different sweet potato distillates uh, and working with local farmers. They harvested potatoes from Miyazaki, made one of the batches potatoes from Kagoshima for another batch. Uh, one of them was made with white koji, one of them was made with black koji, and then the two distillates were blended. Uh, and the the name is, it, it's it's evocative. It, it is a colorful spirit. It's bright. It's, it's fruity. It's uh, a very uh, nice expression of the modern style of sweet potato shochu. In Japanese, there's an expression, imo kusai, which essentially is like stinky sweet potato. And that's what okay. people look for that's in a lot of sweet, sweet a lot of sweet potato shochu. They tend to have this really deep, rich, earthy funk, uh, and that's what some shochu uh, fans here in Japan love. But there's been this recent trend toward this brighter, fruitier style, and colorful was really just one of one of the the, the top of that that style um, mm -hmm. here in Japan. It's quite right. popular. It is bottled at thirty percent, which is uncommon for sweet potato shochu. Okay. And uh, we're, we're thrilled to have it in the and, and what's common, 35 or 25? 25. 25. 25. 25. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a hot potato. It is know. a hot potato. Yeah. Uh, uh, are there <laughs> other, are there other shochus and or automotives in? Oh, that's a beautiful. beautifully colorful label. Yeah. So this Go is, figure. this is the, the U.S. label. This is the Japanese okay. label. So. All right. And what, what is the size on the Japanese bottle? Is that a liter or is that? 1.8 1. 1. 1. liters. 1.8. Wow. It'd, yeah, nice. It'd never get off the ship. It'd never get off the ship here with that. <laughs> um, no, it could be 175, but not 1.8. Well, it can um, now. They changed well, it. Now. Yeah, they changed it. Changed. Yeah. That is right. That is right. Okay. Yeah. 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 And December, sake was always exempt. Um, mm -hmm. That's why yeah, sake is were. available yeah. in all manner of sizes in the U.S. Everybody always picks on the spirits. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was like, um, oh, we can tax everybody for this. Like, we're hmm. just going to make everything difficult yeah. and then make them pay out the butt. You know. So yeah. are there other right. shochus and or automotives in the Honkaku portfolio? There are a couple more. Um, there are a couple of unicorns. And okay. we have we do have a lot more coming. We're, you know, as like quickly as we can, which is not very for fast. Instance? We don't have a seaweed shochu yet, but there are a couple of different types of seaweed that are approved for shochu production. Uh -huh. Um uh -huh. we have we have a bunch of really interesting things that are coming, which will probably require another 
podcast at some okay. time in the not too distant future. But we have a couple of um, curveballs that are available, but very difficult to find because we were only able to secure fifty ca- less than fifty cases of each for the in- and six pack cases. So there's really only a couple yeah. hundred bottles of these in existence. Um, these are made by Yachioden Distillery in Kagoshima. They're both sweet potato shochu expressions at 25%. Okay. They're extremely popular in Japan. So the fact that we got, I can I can hardly buy them here in Tokyo. Oh, wow. The fact that we were able to send some to the U.S. is just basically a factor of the fact that the the people who make it are our friends. Okay. And we 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 asked the first time they said no we asked again they said no we asked the third time they said uh you guys are annoying okay maybe a little bit and so um Krio and Tsurushi both made with sweet potatoes in exactly the same style the main difference is and I, and I think Stephen can describe this better than I can is the way that the sweet potatoes are processed how about Krio yeah. Stephen Sure. So these are actually estate harvested. The Yachi Yoden Distillery started buying up farmland in the Tadumizu region of Kagoshima to grow their own rice and sweet potatoes. So their goal, I believe this year or next year, will be 100% estate grown ingredients for everything they make. They are uh, masochists. But, but the, the Kurio brand, actually, they take these sweet potatoes and then they freeze them. Uh, so if you look at the, it's hard, it might be hard to see because of the Can glare, but... The moon has a little stem coming off of the side, which is the uh-huh. sweet potato lying in the freezer. It also has a crystal sort of uh, texture to the to the image itself because it's frozen. And what that does is much like ice wine, where when you freeze a sweet potato, the, the ice crystals uh, break down the cell walls and release sweetness. Okay. So it concentrates sweetness uh-huh. in in the in the shochu. Tsurushi, the 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 cousin of of they're basically part of the same family. They're called the Moon Series here in Japan. The stem is at the top because mm-hmm. they're hanging. They 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 age yeah. the the potatoes in the rafters of the distillery. Wow. They let them dry out a little bit, and that's okay. going to concentrate sugars, right? The the dehydration is going to concentrate sugar as well. And yet they express completely differently. They're so different. Yeah. And <laughs> I was hoping that the difference would be in in one the potatoes are are are, are once baked, and in the other the potatoes are twice baked. <laughs> These are single baked, double baked. <laughs> These the double baked ones are pretty high. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Oh man, they're hot boxing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so they're, they're but they are those were so hard for us to get we couldn't we couldn't pull samples before they left the country. So the yeah. what Stephen and I have, we hand carried back from the States this summer. Wow. Okay. Wow. There was just no other way for us to get them. You, so if you can is, find them in the States, then what is your market <laughs> geographically? Do you do you do you do you export exclusively to the US? Is it is the market global? What's 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 Honkaku the deal? Honkaku Spirits, Honkaku Spirits mar, uh sells exclusively in the US at this point. Oh, yes. Wow. Okay. Um so there is a chance that we yeah. will we will expand into into Europe and other places, but right now we're really committed to educating so the U.S. market. You're curating a portfolio for the U.S. market, and that's correct. And sort of developing the category that's your mission. And and we're not and we're not specifically Stephen and I really only sell have things in the portfolio that we we drink at home. So we're not we're not thinking like oh and the American spirits drinker wants this. No, we're not thinking about that at all. We're thinking about. What do I like it when like I drink to drink? It, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's why you're not exporting soft drinks. Uh, <laughs> that's, you're not, you're not trying to corner every 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 facet of the market. Okay. No, we're not yet. It's not yet. That's right. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Global domination awaits. Yes. Uh, so what's okay. next? How 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 might you expand the portfolio? Refine the portfolio? Oh, I still. Well, <laughs> I was, we're both waiting for each other to to go first. Stephen, uh, you want to start? Think, actually, maybe Christopher, you could hold up the Kriyo Ord Sudushi label. I think uh, what we really want to do is build out. This is called Honkaku Reserve. Um, right across the top, it says Honkaku mm-hmm. Reserve, and this this one is considered the Harvest series because these were uh, the 2020 harvest is mm-hmm. is what those potatoes were grown from. So anytime we have a a maker that has a state grown ingredients, they'll go into the Harvest series bottle. Anything that's long aged or very, very rare is going into something called Honkaku Reserve Special Selection, which we will start to release uh, next year. 
And then there will also be the main line of Honkaku Reserve, which are going to be what we consider the singular representative expressions of premium shochu of rice, barley, sweet potato, kokuto sugar, buckwheat, awamori, um, and then maybe a, two or three other styles. And mm -hmm. those will be coming out over the next few years in this reserve portfolio that is really kind of the flagship uh, portfolio for the company. It's the best of the best is how we think of it. Mm -hmm. Nice. And those, the only ones that came out in the first shipment were those Kriyo and Sarushi. Uh, but coming in the next shipment and shipments beyond, there will be more and more of these expressions as they come out. And at some point we'll have a full line of Honkaku Reserve products that we think will represent the absolute best in class for each of the styles. Are there other Koji Fuskies? we might see we have talked about it both with shinozaki as well as with others uh, we do mm -hmm. plan to have uh different alternative expressions of takamine uh, nice. in the probably middle of next year i think we'll probably start okay. to see some things logistics willing yeah. um, we've been working on it and we've we also uh shinozaki uh, did just open their malt whiskey distillery Okay. So cool. we will, in the future, have malt in the portfolio, okay. but that's okay. minimum three years away, probably a little bit sure. longer. Right. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So, cool. but we we've also we have been talking to some other distilleries that make. Uh, the, the 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 difficulty is finding something that's legitimately. Koji whiskey, meaning double distilled, mm -hmm. and then aged in a cask, because other distilleries weren't really doing that. You have you have a lot of single pot distilled shochu aged in in oak, but how, are there any whiskeys that are single pot distilled? Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. it expresses so much of the of the grain that it really still expresses as a shochu. And for Christopher and I, what we think of as shochu is, I mean, the, for us, the defining characteristic of a shochu is that it tastes like what it's made from. Mm -hmm. It expresses yeah. the, the the natural ingredients, right. and with single pot distillation, even with long term barrel aging, it's hard it's hard to mask that. It doesn't express looking, as a whiskey. Are you looking at any Japan produced gins or other so called Western spirits? We are, mm -hmm. we are. Yeah. We we uh, have found some very cool things that uh, we we're not at liberty to talk about them just yet. But we have, for instance. Uh, we're, we're talking to somebody who, who makes a fantastic gin that is incredibly simple. It's, it's so surprisingly simple and so surprisingly good that uh, it's almost like, wow, how did you do that with just that many ingredients? That's impressive. Right. Uh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So nice. we're, 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 yeah. we're, we've got a few tricks up our sleeves. Mm -hmm. Very um, good. Yep. You know, we just have to find an empty can to put the things in. So that's a challenge. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, and I've I'm actually a, a huge rum fan, and I've I've been scouring Japan for rum for basically as long as I've lived here, and, and we found we found finally found some very very interesting rums that uh, we hope to include as well. Yeah. And interesting is an yeah. understatement. That yeah, they're, if, wow. I mean, they're, they're super wild. funky, super funky. I mean, one, well, one of them is pretty yeah. funky. Gasoline, okay. asphalt, and strawberries. How does I'm that all sound? I'm in. <laughs> oh no, no. In. <laughs> but then again, you, I you am a I Joe. gasoline. <laughs> then again, I am a I Joe lover. So yeah, yeah. So, sorry, stra 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 strawberries, cement, and uh, and gasoline. Did I at least keep that? you till gasoline that time? Uh, <laughs> Cement. No, you lost me at the strawberries. You had me at strawberries, and well, then that then sounds like a concrete idea. Uh, 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 okay. All right. Shall we discuss cocktails? I think it's cocktail time. All right, cocktail time, gentlemen. Cool. Yes. Your 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 favorite category, your go tos, and with and without spirits from your portfolio. Let's go, Stephen. All right. So I'm I'm simple. I I actually really like just a highball. Okay. Uh, well, how, is, how very Japanese of you. How to, how, right. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's hard to even call it a cocktail sometimes. Although when you've been in a Japanese bar and you watch a bartender take six minutes to make it and the ingredients are uh, ice, spirit, and soda, it's, uh, it's pretty impressive. So I do like yeah. a, a very well-crafted uh, Japanese-style highball. I tend not to add any fruit to it because I want to taste the 
taste mm-hmm. the spirit. But I'm also, I, as I said, I, I really enjoy rum. And so uh, I'll indulge in a daiquiri now and again. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a, that's a favorite of mine. Um, I'm not, I don't really like sugary drinks. I don't really, I don't mm-hmm. drink soft drinks. I don't. And so really stirred aromatic cocktails are not big. Uh, Manhattan's old fashions, blue idea, yeah. the like a little too, too, uh, too, uh, on the sweet end of the spectrum for you. Sure. Sure. I, I guess I, I would, I, I, I tend towards citrus. I do like something that's sparkly and effervescent. So, mm-hmm. but I do like a, I, I like a really well-made Sazerac. I will say that's the mm, nice. exception because nice. that okay. Abyssin Thrint really dries it out. Uh, sure, sure. A quick sidebar question. Rum availability? I know it's very little of it made in Japan, but rum availability in the Japanese market? Mm, it's mostly big, big makers, isn't it? Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so Bacardi. Everywhere. And 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 adjacent. Okay. Havana Club actually is, is one that well, you see yeah. often. So. Okay. That's true. Yeah. Okay. The real stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, and, um, uh, and Mr. Pellegrini, I, I'm, I'm a equal opportunity imbiber of an appreciator of cocktails, although I do err towards the dry side of things. I'm not a huge sweet, I don't have a sweet tooth really, but I do like, Man, I like Manhattans and I like, um, I like a, a good martini. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, old fashioned, I'm fine with an old fashioned every now and again. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I, I, I tend to drink spirits neat, I think is the, with, with a, a so drop of water or something. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but I, I am learning. I mean, of course I've been studying cocktails for a long time. Um, David Wondrich has a, had, had an online cocktail course mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. I'm not sure if he's still administering that, but uh multi-chapter course that I, I took. And uh-huh. so I, I definitely have studied it. Just because I figured somebody's going to crack the code in terms of shochu and awamori and cocktails, yeah. right? You know, there will be at some point the signature with a name on it that everybody makes: sweet potato shochu cocktail, right. and it's yeah, going to sure. take take the world by storm. I'm not going to be the one to craft that thing, but I do <laughs> want to definitely understand yeah, sure. how these things might sure. work for that for the time when it finally graces us with its its presence and then and then all of a sudden shochu has to be on every back bar speaking nice. of david wondrich david is the featured guest in an upcoming edition of another of our series and that oh, yeah. no is kidding the cocktail guru podcast with jonathan pogash yes Fantastic. and jeffrey pogash. and jeffrey we, we sorry, sorry, sorry. We don't, we don't jonathan and jeffrey <laughs> son and father Yes, yes, we produce yes, it. We, we produce that one. We don't. We're not on camera in that one. Very cool. We, w- Stephen and I, were incredibly gratified to share a boiler maker with uh, David Wondrich and okay. Garrett Oliver this summer mm-hmm. in uh-huh. Brooklyn. Very you know, good. That was probably probably the highlight of our adult lives. If I, <laughs> if I might be might be so bold. Yeah, um, I mean, it was yeah. it was a, a shot of takamine and an Odeon beer. It was a pretty okay, pretty perfect right, nice. way to end Very Japanese. Yeah. yeah, very good. Very yeah. good. Very cool. good. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for taking the time and sending all these wonderful samples. Um, I've been like waiting to drink them for a while now. I'm like, okay, well, we don't have very much, so I can't try them yet. I need to wait, which is, it's hard for me to wait because I like to try things <laughs> right away, as Philip can attest. And, um, and if I may, a big thank you to Christine Doyson, who's been a longtime friend of yes. mine and this enterprise uh, for, for helping to make this possible. Yes. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. It's been been a lot of fun. For show notes on today's podcast, please visit our website at spiritsofwhiskey.com. That's whiskey with an E. We'll include links and supporting documents from today's stories in this episode's blog post. As always, you'll see upcoming topics, a guest roster, and links to past shows. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, Sláinteva. Spirits of Whiskey is produced by First Real Entertainment and the Center for Culinary Culture, home of the Cocktail Collection, and is available via Anchor, Apple, Google, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and wherever fine podcasts are heard.